Good afternoon. Another beautiful day in Byron Bay in the Northern Rivers area of Australia. Today I'm talking about the three Bs. If you're interested in some tips on the Byron area, if you're interested in what honey bees can teach us about the importance of a circadian rhythm, and if you're interested in some information about a sugarless, permissionless, immutable, decentralized form of wealth called Bitcoin, then keep watching, which you should. And you should subscribe. And you should share the video, because it's important information. I'll be back in a second after the mandatory musical break. Hello. Last week when I made the video, I remembered I talked about the nature reserve to the north, the nature reserve to the south, the marine park to the east, the sun above, the obsidian rock below. But I thought I got to talk about what's out west. And out west is the of Byron is two national parks, the Nightcap National Park and the Mount Jerusalem National Park, which are both part of the Gondwana rainforest range, which is the biggest subtropical strip of rainforest anywhere in the world. And those of you who watch this channel regularly will know about the Nightcap National Park, because that's where Minion Falls is, where I film a lot of the cold thermogenesis videos. Minion Falls is well worth a visit. It, uh, it cascades down from Repentance Creek in the Nightcap National Park. It's uh, part of a old volcano and it's a hundred meter drop down to a very cold pool, at least in winter, because in the shade, the pool, where I do my cold thermogenesis training a lot. But the it falls down a hundred meters of rheolite and obsidian rock and the markings on the cliff face are extraordinary. So it's well worth a visit when you're in the area. You also get to go through the little town of Federal and stop for coffee in the one shop in town which makes amazing coffee, who would have thought? So definitely when you're in the Byron area, take a trip to the very, very, very old rainforest at Nightcap National Park and have a look at Minion Falls. Second thing I want to talk about was Honeybees, because there's two fascinating studies out this week. The first study looked at pesticides in honeybees, and they found out now why pesticides almost certainly are killing honeybees, and that's because it messes with their circadian rhythm and their sleep cycle. So I kind of think that if pesticides are messing with the circadian rhythm of honeybees and killing them, they're probably doing the same to me. So, two really good reasons to go organic for me. One is to save the honeybees, and two is to look after my circadian rhythm. Because that circadian rhythm is set by the sun by getting natural light on my eyes, where the omega-3 fatty acid DHA converts that light signal into an electrical signal which goes to my hypothalamus, my SCN, my suprachiasmatic nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus in my hypothalamus, which is the central clock for my body. And if you mess with that central clock in honeybees, it kills them. So I don't want to mess with my central clock, which I mess with that by getting exposed to non-natural, non-natural, non-native EMFs and artificial light, which is why you see me usually out at sunrise and set in the middle of the day getting my UV light for my vitamin D. The second study about honeybees was fascinating because it looked at the different roles, well not different roles of honeybees, but there's honeybees and there's solitary bees and wasps. Not all bees live in hives. And what they found is that solitary bees are born with a circadian rhythm born with an internal clock which is operative right from birth and they work shifts they have time for work they have time for play they have time for feeding all on a circadian rhythm whereas honeybees 
which live in hives in a social group are not born with an internal clock, not born with a circadian rhythm. That doesn't develop until later. So for the first half of their life, they freaking work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, deep in the hive, doing work. No fun, no play, just 24 hours of work. It's only later in their life when they develop a circadian rhythm and internal clock that they get to go outside, fly around in the sun, have some fun and collect pollen. The moral of that story, obviously, so beautiful here. The moral of that story is if you want to have some fun in your life and you don't want to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, make sure you look after your internal clock and your circadian rhythm by seeing that sunrise, by seeing that sunset and minimise exposure to artificial light and non-native EMFs after it gets dark at night. The third thing I want to talk about was that a study showed that your risk of type 2 diabetes is 30% lower if you get adequate sunlight. Remember, if you're going to get adequate sunlight, make sure you protect your skin. I'm not only protecting my skin, but I'm nourishing it with essential oils and special oils that I learned about from Native Americans and Indians when I was in Arizona. How they protect their skin. So the risk of diabetes is type 2 diabetes is 30 percent less if you get adequate sunlight and it's independent of vitamin d it's not just about vitamin d something else with the sun so the sun is a sugarless permissionless store of health bitcoin i always talk about bitcoin being a well we can add sugarless too bitcoin is a sugarless decentralized immutable store of wealth, permissionless, trivialist, decentralized, permissionless, immutable store of wealth. So what does that mean? Well, permissionless means you don't have to have permission to buy any Bitcoin. If you're a hunter-gatherer in Asda in Tanzania, you can buy some Bitcoin. And they are. Most of Africa is buying Bitcoin. They want to use it as their independent source of monetary system. It's immutable. It doesn't change. There's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. Probably only 18 million now because several have been, many million have been lost permanently. You can never make more Bitcoin. You can divide them up. One Bitcoin is divided up into 100 million Satoshis. But that doesn't change, there will never more, be no more Bitcoin. You can cut an apple into four quarters or cut it into eight. You've got more pieces, but you don't have more apples. That's compared to printing more apples. If you print a second apple, magically, you've now halved the price of your apple because you've created one out of thin air. You can't do that with Bitcoin. So it's permissionless. It's immutable or unchangeable and it's decentralized. There is no CEO of Bitcoin, no board of directors of Bitcoin to make any changes to their policy. It is a monetary system owned by the people for the people. That's why I like it so much. It's about self-sovereignty, about being responsible for our own lives. So there you go, that's today's lessons. Get down to Byron, see Minion Falls. Be like a honeybee. Go organic, be like a honeybee, look after your circadian rhythm, and have a look into Bitcoin. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Peace and love.